Welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. We will talk about connect any data source, external data source with custom Apex connector. Sorry, we don't have a clicker, and I forgot I was the clicker. <laughs> yeah, I have a wonderful clicker. My name is Ralph Schulman. I'm a product manager uh, with Salesforce, and I have uh, Joyce Yi with me. She's an awesome developer on my team. You probably all know this slide. You probably can recite it. But uh, keep in mind, we might make forward-looking statements in this presentation and make your purchasing decisions based on actually available functionality. So what are we going to talk about today? Um, first, we want to give you a, a quick intro to Salesforce Connect so that all of you are on the same page. What, what is this feature all about? And then uh, we move into a quick overview of the roadmap. What did we deliver in winter 18? What's coming further down the pike? And then the focus will really be on how do I build a custom Apex connector to connect with an external data source. So we talk a little bit about the concept, but then uh, Joyce will really do a deep dive also on what are the components, what are the classes, what do you need to do from a development point of view to make that happen. And then potentially we have uh, some time for Q&A. So what is Salesforce Connect? It's, it's a virtual integration solution. And the key message is really that it enables you to leverage external data without copying that data into Salesforce. So typically, in classic scenarios, data is copied into Salesforce, and then you can um, work with the data. And Salesforce Connect is really about the fact that you access data on demand when you need it um, and bring it in. There are three major. Um, areas that are important. Uh, first and foremost, uh, connectivity leveraging OData2 and OData4. So your external data source would have to be OData2 or OData4 compliant. Um, we also have a Salesforce cross org connector, which allows you to connect with other Salesforce orgs. Uh, both of these are in read and write mode. And then, of course, today we talk about the Apex Connector framework. This is really designed to um, access applications that have an API but that are not necessarily OData compliant. So you can basically build your own connector to connect with those data sources. Now, one of the key features of Salesforce Connect is also to bring in data for reporting purposes. So you can create reports, you can create dashboards, and then in um, Einstein Analytics, you can also use it to create trending reports, or you can create what is called a Sockle step to bring in external data in real time into an Einstein Analytics dashboard. Um, there are two key features that we released this winter. One is external data change tracking. We just did a session on this this morning. Uh, really think of it as high level as triggers. So change events in an external application can trigger processes in Salesforce. And then, of course, from a developer point of view, batch Apex support is really interesting because it allows you to bring in large amounts of data for processing into Salesforce, again, without copying that data into Salesforce. Now, the foundation of Salesforce Connect is a, a new object type. It's called, um, the object type is called external object. Really think of it as the cousin of the custom object. It really looks and feels like a custom object. It has probably 95 plus percent of the same capabilities. Um, the only difference is really that the data is not stored in Salesforce. And because of that fact, there are also some limitations that come with it. Probably one of the, the most asked feature requests is formula fields. Because the data doesn't exist, um, we currently do not support formula fields. But when you look at the list here, it's really powerful. Uh, sometimes we forget to mention such basics as search. You can use um, the Salesforce search fun function to search data in your external system by leveraging Salesforce Connect. Um, you get mobile basically for free if you are using um, uh, Salesforce Connect, and if you're using the Salesforce mobile device, you can put the data, um, um, or the data is available. Can you go back? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, on your mobile device. And then, of course, you can use Apex, Visual Force, Sockle, Sossel, Lightning components. I mean, the full power of the platform is really available for external objects. Now we do the next. OK, so what did we deliver in winter? I mentioned already the external data change tracking. It's a closed pilot in winter. If you're interested, let us know. Um, batch Apex support for external objects is GA. 
Um, if you are an event monitoring customer, you can also leverage event monitoring um, to analyze the, the logs for Salesforce Connect callouts. And then, which might be helpful, we posted a validation tool on the App Exchange that allows you to validate your data source. So it runs through some simple uh, scripts, uh, some simple queries to, to validate your external data source. Now what's coming in Spring? Uh, we want to move external data change tracking into an open pilot. Uh, for that purpose, we need a UI. Uh, in the closed pilot, you would have to use the metadata, metadata API to uh, do the configuration. And we're also um, having Apex triggers then in, in Spring. Um, some of you might have heard of the Global Data Pro uh, Protection Regulations, GDPR, um, that required a lot of changes on our end. So we needed to change how we do event monitoring for uh, Salesforce Connect callouts. So uh, this is why we delayed the GA for the event monitoring for Salesforce Connect. And then we will provide a more comprehensive debugging capabilities as well. Long term, we want to GA external data change tracking. Uh, we want to support custom HTTP headers. This is very important when you use, for example, an integration user uh, for authentication. The HTTP header support will allow you to send in additional parameters um, that you can use for filtering to retrieve data. Could be as simple as who is the user that is actually making the call. Um, so you still use the integration user, but we can pass on the user information to, for example, only retrieve records that are owned by that person. Uh, last but not least, Lightning experience. A lot of setup is still in Classic or Aloha, so we want to move that into Lightning. And by doing so, we will also want to do um, offer a more comprehensive metadata sync and metadata management capabilities. Um, if you have used Salesforce Connect, and you know during the development cycle, uh, sometimes if you add additional fields, the validate and sync is really a, an either or. Um, so we want to be more granular. Um, last but not least, the Apex Mock Data pro uh, Producer. This is really a, a tool meant to uh, allow you to um, run test automation on Salesforce Connect without having a live external data source. Okie doke, I think you're up next. Yes. We need to run really fast, so we want to leave enough time for the demo. So today I will be demoing the Apex Connector framework by creating a custom connector with all of you. Um, so today what I have is an external system that has information on both properties and realtors, and I want to be able to use that information in my org. So uh, I do have a simple REST web service, so let's go into Postman, which is a REST client, and see what my services do. Slash realtor returns to me three realtors, and if I have slash property, it returns to me property. So Realtor is pretty standard. You have first name, last name, license number. Um, what's interesting in property is that we do have a Realtor ID that is a many-to-one relationship with Realtor. So this is how my data looks on my external system. So let's get started with the Apex Connector framework. Now, th my service is a good candidate for using a custom connector because it is not an OData provider. Uh, so in order to use the Apex Connector Framework, we need to implement two classes, the provider and the connection. So the provider inherits from data source provider. And what this does is you define how your authentication will look and also what capabilities you'll have on the data itself. So in Git, Git authentication capabilities, you'll see here that I've defined anonymous because I don't need to authenticate into my web service. But I've also added basic for... Um, demo purposes. So we'll see what that does in a bit when I demo more closely. I've also overridden Git capabilities. And this method is used to define what kinds of actions you can take on your data. So in my case, I want to be able to query and search on my data. But it's also possible to create, update, and delete. And this happens on your external system through Salesforce. We never copy the data into your org. And lastly, I'll define my connection class, which we'll get to in a bit. So let's go into my org. My Apex classes are already in here, so let's go to external data sources. From the provider class that I just showed you, I have enough information to create my external data source. So let's go in here. You'll notice that in the type dropdown, I now have property data service provider. 
So you can uh, implement as many providers as you want, but the number of connections you can have is limited to your license. So let's give this a name. I don't need authentication here, uh, but because I had added basic authentication, you'll also see per user and named principle show up here as well. If you had declared certificate, you could add certificate information here as well. OK, great. Now that I have my data source, I want to be able to define the schema of how my data looks. And we do that through validate and sync. Uh, so let's go back to the connection class. By clicking validate and sync in the UI, you call sync in your, sync in your connection class. So your connection class inherits from data source connection. You can call it whatever you would like. And sync returns a list of tables. So in a relational database, a table has um, columns. In our world, we have an external object with fields. So you can refer, so every time you create a table, you're creating an external object. Every time you create a column, you're creating a field. So in sync, we are only creating the metadata. We don't need to be worried about the data or the rows in your external system yet. Uh, so here, I'm going to be returning a list of tables. I first want to add realtor. So what kind of fields do I have here? You'll see I have first name, license, uh, first name, last name, and license number. Uh, let's keep things a little bit interesting. So what I'll do is I want to tie this license number to an existing contact in my org. So how would I do that? Um, you'll notice here I've defined first name, last name as text fields. And the field type of license number is now an indirect lookup to the custom field realtor license number on the, on the object contact. An indirect lookup is a lookup relationship between an external object and a custom or standard object. Uh, next, you'll see I have an external ID and display URL. These are standard fields on every external object, and they're required. So we'll get into what I will populate that with later. After I've created the columns, let's now create the table. So again, the table is the external object. Um, I'm very verbose here. I wanted to add a label, singular and plural. I gave it a description. And most importantly, I added my columns to my table. And after that, let's add the table to my list of tables. OK, let's move on to properties. Very similar. But the most interesting thing to note here is, again, this realtor ID is a lookup to the realtor external object. So this is an external lookup field type. So let's come here and look. I've defined the field type to be an external lookup, which is a lookup between two external objects. The name of the field will be realtor ID, and the lookup is to the realtor external object underscore underscore x. Again, we have external ID and display URL, and then text and number fields, which are pretty standard. As more succinct here in adding the property columns to my table and adding the table to the list of tables, which I will return. So let's go back to my org and validate and sync. You'll see now that I've returned two tables, and I can go ahead and sync both of them to my org. This creates the external objects and the fields on them. So now you'll notice here we have two external objects. In property, I have an external lookup to realtor. And in a realtor, I have an indirect lookup to contact. OK, so let's get back. Now let's look at data. We've defined the schema of our data. So now we can go ahead and bring in the data, which is also known as the rows of your database, or in our case, records in Salesforce. So I've overridden the query method, which returns a table result. And that encapsulates all of the records to be shown. Um, so if we look here, I've kind of gone an easy route and used query utils. And when I call create utils, I'm able to pass it a list of rows and then apply any filters that are on the list view um, locally to my rows. So what does it mean to get the rows? 
I have a get rows private method, which I've implemented. And the most important thing to note here is I have two tables. So in order to query your data, you need to know which table you're querying from. So I can go ahead and get that from the context and query context. Um, it's also possible to get um, pagination information from the context if your system supports pagination as well. So in get rows, I generate the URL and I append the right endpoint. So if you'll remember, realtor was slash realtor, property was slash property, and I make a get callout. The get callout is just a simple HTTP request um, with the URL and it's a get, as we saw in my REST client. So after we make the get callout, we do have a response back. Once we get the response back, we can deserialize the JSON. In my case, the JSON was a list of objects. So I can go ahead and cast my um, object to be a list of objects. Now I need to go through the list of objects and um, parse them in a way that's readable in Salesforce. So what I want to do is return a bunch of rows. So remember, rows translates to records. And one row is represented by a map, with the key being the field name and the value being the field value. So I can go ahead and iterate through my list and go ahead and create each row on its own and add it to the rows list. So let's take a look at populate realtor row. You'll notice here that I'm able to get the ID from the response. And I use that for both my external ID and my display URL. So in my case, my display URL is slash realtor endpoint, so slash realtor, slash, and then the ID itself. And we'll see once we get to a record what that means when I click on it. And everything else is mapped pretty um, in a very straightforward way. And populate property row is done in the same way as well with external ID and display URL. So let's get back to our org. Like custom objects, we do require that tabs be created. So let's go ahead and create a tab for property. And another one for realtor. Now let's go ahead and look at Realtor. And let's view everything. And to make it more interesting, let's look at some more fields. You'll notice here that the license number is now um, uh, linked to the contact because I'd created an indirect lookup. And if I click on it, we see the contact here. And here, the display URL, again, is a clickable URL. I go ahead and click it, and I link directly to the row of data from my external system. OK, now let's get to property. Let's view all the data, and I need to add some fields so we know what we're looking at. Did I not add it? Oh. OK. So here, the realtor ID, again, is an external lookup to the realtor. So if I were to click it, it opens up the realtor um, record. Um, also, as I mentioned, I use query utils as a way for me to be able to query locally and apply filters to a return data set from my external system. So if I were to add a filter, say, um, state is New York, done, save, you'll see that now there are only two records. What's important to know and that I'd like to emphasize is again, this system is all, or sorry, this data is all in the external system. Um, <clears throat> we never modify it directly, or we never copy it into Salesforce. So if I go back to my REST client and I were to edit one of my property sales, so let's say I have a simple put and I change this to an escrow, send that. 
We come back to our list view, refresh, and now it's in escrow. And this is all mapped to what's in our external system. Okay. And getting back here. So this is a very brief overview of what a custom connector looks like. Um, given our time, but we have a lot of other resources. So this morning, Thomas gave a great session on expanding um, what you can do with your external system. That will be recorded, so please join us on the Trailblazer community where we'll post the recording. You can also post any questions, um, tell us how you're doing on the community. We also have a lot of external documentation uh, with examples of other Apex connectors that you can base your Apex connector off of. Thank you very much, right on time. <laughs>